a current of 30 amps flows north on a 5 meter long wire and a current of 50 amps flows south on another wire that's 5 meters long and these two wires are 3 centimeters apart. Calculate the magnitude and direction of the magnetic force between the two wires. So let's start with a picture. Now let's go over some basic concepts that you need to know. What is the direction of the magnetic force if both currents are flowing parallel to each other? They're both going in the same direction. And what's the direction of the magnetic force if the currents are anti-parallel? Let's say if one current goes north and the other goes south. What would you say? Now, what you need to know is if the currents are traveling in the same direction, then the magnetic force is a force of attraction. Now, if they're traveling in opposite directions, the reverse is true. The wires will be repelled by each other. So make sure you know that. Now let's focus on this problem. So the first wire has a current of 30 amps and that current is flowing north. Now this wire, let's call this current, current 1, this wire will create its own magnetic field. So using the right hand rule, if you grab a pen and you hold it with your thumb pointing north and notice how your fingers curl around that pen. It should be curled around in this direction. So that's how the magnetic field is moving around this wire. So on the left side, it's coming out of the page, represented by this symbol. And on the right side, it's going into the page. So this current will create its own magnetic field, B1, which is mu0, the permeability of free space, times I1, divided by 2 pi r. Now let's put a second wire right next to it. and we have a current flowing south. And this current is 50 amps. And it's going in this direction. So let's call this I2. And let's say this wire is separated by a distance of R. So this current will generate a magnetic field which will exert a force on the moving charges on that wire. So let's find out what it is. To calculate the magnetic force on a wire with a current flowing through the wire, it's ILB sine theta. Now, because the magnetic field is going into the page in the negative z direction and the current is flowing south in the negative y direction, the angle between the z axis and the y axis is 90, so sine 90 is 1. So we could say that the force is just ILB, where L is the left of the wire. So now what we're going to do is replace B with this term because B is equal to that. So this will give us this equation. F is I, and this is I2 by the way, due to this wire. So it's I2 times L times B which is mu0 I1 over 2 pi R. So to calculate the magnetic force acting on each wire, it's going to be, let's start with mu0, I1, I2, times the length of each wire divided by 2 pi r, where r is the distance between the two wires. Now, some books may have the same formula but using different letters, so make sure you understand what these two values are. So in this particular video, just remember, R is the distance between the two wires, and capital L is the length of the wire. Your textbook might use different letters and may have a different meaning for those things, so make sure you understand what those variables are. Earlier, we said that if the two currents in the wires, if they're moving in opposite directions, each wire will feel a force that will basically pull them apart from each other. Now, let's go ahead and confirm that. So let's determine the force acting on this wire. 
So the first current will generate a magnetic field that's going into the page on the right of the first wire. And we have a current flowing in the negative y direction. So let's determine the direction of the magnetic force using the right hand rule. So what you need to do is you need to point your thumb south. So like this, your thumb represents the direction of the current. And then your four fingers should be going into the page. That's going to be hard to draw. So this is the direction of I2. And the magnetic field is going uh, into the page. And then out of the palm of your hand will be the direction of the force. So if you point your four fingers into the page and your thumb going uh, south, the magnetic force should be coming out of the palm of your hand, which is this way. And so that shows that the second wire is moving away from the first wire. So anytime the currents are anti-parallel to each other, they will, the wires will repel each other. They're going to move apart. Now let's go ahead and finish the problem. Mu zero is four pi times 10 to the minus seven. The first current is 30 amps. The second current is 50 amps. And the length of each wire is five meters divided by two pi r. So r is the distance between the two wires. So that's three centimeters, which is 0 0.03 meters if you divide it by 100. So four pi divided by two pi, that's going to be two. So it's two times 10 to the minus seven times 30 times 50 times 5 divided by 0 0.03. And so the magnetic force acting on each wire is 0 0.05 newtons. And so that's how you can calculate it. Now let's move on to our second problem. A current of 50 amps flows east on a stationary wire. So let's draw a picture of that. A second wire is one centimeter below it. How much current must be flowing in the second wire so that it doesn't fall due to gravity? So let's say this current is called I1 and this is I2. So we need to calculate the magnitude of I2 and also the direction. Now gravity is going to pull the second wire down in this direction. So we need a magnetic force that's going to lift the second wire. So what direction must the current be going? Well, keep in mind, if the currents are flowing in opposite directions, we know that these two wires will repel. So the forces will be in this direction. And we don't want the magnetic force to bring the wire down. We want it to bring it up. So therefore, the currents must be parallel to each other so that the two wires will attract each other. So I2 is also flowing east. So we need to calculate the value of I2. Now the first thing we need to do in order to calculate the value of I2 is we need to calculate the force per unit length. Now the two wires, they're separated by a distance of one centimeter. So that's equal to R. Now. In order for the wire not to fall, the wire has to be in equilibrium in the y direction. That means the sum of all forces in the y direction must add to zero. So the net force in the y direction is equal to the positive magnetic force minus the downward weight force. And if that's equal to zero, then we can see that the weight force has to be equal to the magnetic force. Now we don't have the mass, but we do have the mass per unit length. So we need to divide both sides by L. So the force per unit length is going to be the mass per unit length times the gravitational acceleration. 
Now, m over l, we said it's 5 grams per meter. Now, we need to convert grams to kilograms. 1 kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. So 5 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.005. So the mass per unit length is 0 0.005 kilograms per meter. And the gravitational acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. So let's multiply those two values. 0 0.005 times 9.8. Let me see if I can fit it in here. So the force per unit length is now 0 0.049 newtons per meter. So now that we have this value, how can we calculate the current flowing in the second wire? What do we need to do? Well, we know that the magnetic force between two wires is going to be F which equals mu zero I one I two times L, which is the length of the wire, divided by two pi R, where R is the distance between the two wires. So let's isolate I two in this equation. So we're gonna cross multiply. So F times two pi R is that, and that is equal to one times mu zero I one I two times L. Now let's divide both sides by mu zero I one L. So therefore, we could say that I two is equal to the force per unit length. So that's going to be F over L times 2 pi r, and on the bottom what we have left over is mu zero i1. So we could use that formula to calculate the current in the second wire. So the force per unit length, we have that, it's this value, so that's 0 0.049 multiplied by 2 pi r, and r is 1 centimeter, so that's if you divide it by 100.01 meters, and mu zero, that's 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7, and then I1 is this current, 50 amps. Now, 2 pi divided by 4 pi, that's 1 half. So basically, this becomes a 2. So then I2 is simply 0 0.049 times 0 0.01, and then take that result, divided by 2 times 10 to negative 7, and then divide that result by 50. And you should get this answer. I2 is 49 amps. And so that's it for this problem. Now you know how to calculate the current in the second wire.